Well, Lee just just wrapped COP26. Today, we are discussing some of the biggest news in climate change. And the changing political climate to help save the globe. I'm Yasmin Tanris. And I'm Lauren Labruna, and we've got issues. <laughs> so today, we're talking about climate change. Why is climate change such a big issue? Well, it actually seems to be resonating with a lot of people. A 2021 Pew Research report found that specifically with Gen Z, they are overwhelmingly overwhelmingly worried about climate change, with 76% of them saying it's one of their biggest societal concerns. Um, and now global conditions are directly threatening people's health, according to Nat Geo and the WHO, declaring climate change the single biggest threat facing humanity. Not to mention, this, this past summer, the UN agency came out with a report saying there was a, quote, code red for humanity, which again urged a lot of people to get involved and get working on this issue that we have at hand, climate change. But we are going to talk about COP26. I know, Yasmin, you know a lot about this. So give us an update. What happened and what exactly is COP26? Absolutely. But before that, I'm sorry. Like, as you were reeling that off, it just made me think about something. I was like, Lauren, do you notice as well in terms of climate change impact for yourself, like your health? Some of the stuff that you've been reeling off or know any people? Because I keep on hearing this, like asthma, you know, people experiencing asthma or having troubles breathing as well or like things in the water. Like, do you experience that at all in your daily life as well? I feel like here in L.A., it's a given that the air quality is not the best. And I think being from California, being raised in California, you've, we started to notice, especially for myself, these wildfires. You know, wildfire season is now two to three months longer. We have a lot more wildfires. The biggest fires in California's history have been in the last couple years. So I think in that retrospect, I've seen personally, wow, there is an issue here. And, and what exactly is First going on hand. is the real question. You know what? Actually, that's a really good point. One of the things that frightened me to come over to America was knowing about these disastrous weather conditions. And now actually living here in Los Angeles and experiencing it, I'm like, man, this is really normal. But is it? Is it? Is it supposed to be? Do we want it to be normal? Like, really? Yeah. So this is why hmm, we've got real issues, right? We're going to dive into COP26. It is the Conference of Parties. That's what COP stands for. So a little bit of, you know, terminology there. Is it COP? Is it COP? Mm. Anyways, we'll go with COP26. With Everybody's it. been talking about it like that. Um, so why 26? It's the 26th meeting that world leaders have gathered. Now, the UN uh, actually started this back in 1995 to gather world leaders together to talk about climate change and how to best tackle it. Because they notice something's happening here, right? And you've just spoken about Code Red. That's scary. That's really alarming, guys. Really, like we need to really get on with it. Anyways, what happened at COP26? This was held in the past two weeks in Glasgow. Around about 30,000 delegates gathered together who represent 197 countries. Now, who was there? Uh, for the most part, mo most countries did turn up in person. However, uh, Russia... China, Brazil, nope, nope, they came virtually though. <laughs> Which was a little bit of a bummer. A lot of people were like, okay, is this what's the point of having COP26 then? Um, okay, so they they hold these meetings every year, like I've said, it's the 26th and yeah, well, it's kind of following from the Paris Agreement, which happened back in 2015. That was like the last biggest uh, conglomerate of all these world leaders trying to tackle the um, climate issue. And their biggest goal here was to have global warming come down to 1.5 Celsius. Now, please do tell me what that is in Fahrenheit. Right. According to our research, it's 34.7 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is really important to distinguish for all of our American viewers because when you're like 1.5 Celsius, I don't know Celsius very well. I'm like, what is that? Then you're like 34 degrees, 34.7. That seems like a lot. And I want to know from you, I think that's what a lot of people have heard here, this 1.5 degrees Celsius. Why is it 1.5? point five. Right. So they they really want to keep this alive. And this is what they this has been the entire goal of the summit. Like, let's keep this alive as best as possible to reduce emissions, cut out methane and de deforestation. Also being able to support the poorer nations. Um, but go, going back to your question, I mean, why 1.5? Because we're already, like you've said, wildfires, all the ex extreme weather conditions, um, they're becoming more extreme. And if the earth heats itself even more so, we're going to notice even more impacts when it comes to those weather conditions. And not just weather conditions, but also displacement. 
human displacements, a lot of right. climate refugees. Um, so it's really scary. Right now, the pledges seem to be on target for 2.7 Celsius, which doesn't sound good at all. And that's because, okay, some of the countries have been have committed this time around to like, okay, let's really cut cut down these emissions and be ambitious with these goals. But other countries are like, mm, you know what, uh, let's just, you know, kind of wait until the peak and then maybe do something about it, which kind of sounds a bit dangerous. And I'm curious too, is this 1.5, you know, obviously it's not in one year. What is the time frame looking at to keep it to the 1.5? You're saying it's looking more realistically like 2.7 degrees Celsius. What is the timeline expected to keep it at that one point, I mean, they definitely want it by the end of the century, but it should mm -hmm. really, like, it should be by 2100 max. But to get to that goal, they'll have to really speed up lowering those emissions within nine years. Which, if I break down some of the countries as to what some of their pledges are, it just seems like, is this fair? Is it, is it really going to happen? Are they really going to come down to 1.5? And when you're saying, like, is it really fair? Like, are you talking about the biggest players here? I think we all know it's like U.S., China, India. Is that really the discrepancy here when the larger developed countries in some cases are really producing a lot more emissions? Mm -hmm. uh, how do they remedy that? Yeah. Okay. Let me just clarify here, guys. I'm not really a climate expert. <laughs> However. Neither am I. Let's, let's be real here. But we want to <laughs> learn, right? We, we want to exactly. learn ourselves. And we're here to just have that open open conversation because climate change can be a little scary and a little overwhelming clearly for me uh, but you know what no You're no teach this me. is the research okay this is us too <laughs> learning as we go with you guys but we really wanted to make sense as to why cop 26 which is such a huge deal is, again like you mentioned code red this year i think that really instigated world leaders to think like holy shit like since paris agreement we've barely done any shit basically and then the pandemic hit the shit <laughs> okay or, or a fan hit We're the like, shit bleep, whatever bleep, okay <laughs> 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 all right so um well let's let's dive into that right i We're mean yeah some of the biggest players are the you know notoriously known to cause the biggest damage um, and it, it, they are the ones who have to really step up their game. And, and I think that's what they're pushing for. And what, like, I'm curious here, like, what are the actual pledges? I know you talked about deforestation, stopping deforestation, cutting the emissions. Yeah. What, what are they promising? Uh, what are yeah. they working toward here? Especially, I think, again, toward COP27, right? That's going to be next year as well. I, I think I saw that they are going to have to prepare a plan for the next year as well. So what is the pledges that they're working toward right now? So far, okay, the first big commitment at the UN Climate Conference in Glasgow was more than 100 countries uh, that represent 85% of deforestation have pledged to end deforestation by 2030 and wow. replant lost trees. Now, that's amazing. It's positive as well to see that China and Brazil are involved in this. Although what is interesting and noteworthy about this is that Brazil, Brazil's domestic policy don't actually line up with their bold statement there. So, and I know this is something you're going to touch upon as well when it comes to these pledges, pledges, okay? Um, but okay, that was the first big one. Now, the US, Britain, France, and Germany have also announced to help South Africa um, with an $8.5 billion in loans and grants over five years to phase out coal. They basically use around about 90% 90, 90 of coal-fired plants um, to have electricity. That's that's a lot in South Africa there. And then the US, that was big as well. They're cutting methane um, by approximately 75%, which is part of a broader effort with the EU in which they want to worldwide cut methane by 30%, and that is by 2030 as well. So 2030 is a big year. That's a, that's a year all of us need to look out for, okay, 2030. Um, India, in the last minute, they said they were going to phase out coal However, they changed their verbiage later on to phasing down, um, and they want to reach net zero emissions by 2070. Now, Saudi Arabia as well, by 2060, want to reach net zero. Brazil, by 2050. And then China, um, they still hold firm to allow their emissions to rise until 2030, and then eventually decline those till 2060. So they're one of those who are like, mm. So they're going to work toward... Just let's going just go, up. Let's go, 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 go. And, and then, then they'll go down. Boom. Yeah. Do they have any reasoning? They're just that's just what they're telling the people. I mean, I just you know I have to think about how much is produced in China. Is it made in China? Made in like, China. You know, yep. check I, your tags, people. Exactly. Uh, I just feel like they can't do without. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Got I'm some serious. peeps here. How many times do you see like on something that you open the little made in China sticker? Probably like, everything that we was around. Going by up there, it's China. going up in the <laughs> atmosphere, people. I'm just like, you know. oh gosh. But, on Amazon. Everything. But I think you're talking about all these you know, promises, these commitments, I think it's important to note that all these commitments are going to be self-policed. So, you know, you talk about India, the last minute they changed to phase down, you know, and obviously India is a whole other question itself. They have a lot of people in poverty there as well. So maybe they're re relying on coal more than they anticipated. So they're like, you know what, we got to phase down, we can't phase out, who knows. But these people are going to be policing themselves, which is interesting. We all want to help the climate. Uh, we're really going to see who does want to help the climate by self-policing, and none of these are legally binding. But on a positive note, I like to stay positive around here, uh, this is seen as setting a global agenda for the next decade uh, in a positive light, and you're using that Hopefully. keyword 2030. <laughs> That's the one to look out for. Although you're right, you know, India didn't actually formally submit their pledges still to the UN. Uh, suspicious. Not so, yeah, suspicious, right? I mean, at least they, you know, they're more open about phasing down rather than phasing out, which again, you know, open to dispute there uh, what's correct. But one of the big surprise uh, movements or announcements that we do have to mention is that US and China are actually mm, going to yes. be working together on strengthening their ties when it comes to tackling climate change. And I think that's something to look out for as well, because uh, President Xi and President Biden did just get together on Monday and had some talks. We should follow up on that as well. But um, yeah, you know, it's interesting to see because both of them were not part of the climate change pact a few years ago when there was a, a, one of those COP meetings. And they were like, no, if that one's not playing, I'm not playing. So mm. now they seem to be playing together. I think that's, that's good a news. Movement right there, yeah. So yeah, but aside from that, right? We we had Greta Thunberg, the who, famous Greta. Oof, she was not so convinced. She's not always so happy. I think we have a little display of that. It is not a secret that COP26 is a failure. It should be obvious that we cannot solve a crisis with the same methods that got us into it in the first place. And more and more people are starting to realize this. Many are starting to ask themselves, what will it take for the people in power to wake up? But let's be clear, they are already awake. They know exactly what they are doing. They know exactly what priceless values they are sacrificing to maintain business as usual. Right, so you just heard it from Greta herself. And I think this really goes into us talking about what the young people care about. Like, obviously, Greta has become really an icon of climate change and climate activism. Um, and we're going to take a look now. We hope we're not boring you guys. We don't want you falling asleep. But we're going to talk about some of the warning signs uh, that come with climate change, which you talk about as well. A lot of these pledges that we heard about and a lot of these um, movements that people at COP26 were moving toward come from these warning signs. So let's get into a little bit of that. We're going to start with temperature rising. So temperature rising is obviously global warming. We've heard that since we were children as well. Uh, one of the key issues here, we're talking about that 1.5 degrees Celsius. We're not going to let you forget it. Um, we're also going to talk about droughts. Droughts become more extreme as a sign of climate change and extreme weather events. I think that's something that a lot of the people across the globe have seen as well. Uh, the number of record high temperature events in the U.S. have been increasing, while the number of low temperature events have been decreasing since the year 1950. And the U.S. has also witnessed increasing numbers of intense rainfall events, according to the always trusty NASA. So, that is something that I think a lot of people are seeing. We're also going to talk about glaciers. Glaciers melting. I think everyone always thinks of climate change typically about the animals as well. Polar I think that's bears. something we haven't gotten to as well. You know, protecting species, um, endangered wildlife is something that obviously a lot of people care about. We want to keep these beautiful, lovely animals alive. And that includes polar bears. So when it comes to the glaciers, glaciers are retreating almost everywhere around the world, including the Alps, Himalayas, Andes, Rockies, and Alaska and Africa um, only a few glaciers are actually advancing in the locations that are already freezing, which obviously is an issue in itself. Um, and that really brings us to 
you know, the wor real world effects that we're going to start seeing here from climate change, including sea levels rising again when those glaciers are melting. This is all the science talking, not me. Um, but when the glaciers do melt, that can help contribute to the sea levels rising. And I think we're going to start seeing, you know, people affected, especially in coastal communities and warming ocean water. So, you know, there's a lot of things, but there's things we can do about it. And I think that's one thing that I think we should really focus on here is staying positive and seeing those solutions that we can work toward. But we want to talk about those people that are in these situations that are going to be most affected by climate change. And yes, I think you have a lot of information on that to share as well. Ooh, I mean, do I? <laughs> no, <it's just> like, <laughs> no pressure. No yeah. pressure at all. <laughs> all I know is that if we do not reach the 1.5 Celsius, 34 point what Fahrenheit, um, there will be a further 420 million people displaced. Um, that's a lot, you guys. And we know there's a lot of border crises and issues and a lot of countries that are like, how, how are we going to handle this, right? Um, so we really, really have to come together to work on this issue. Um, in terms of these weather things that you were talking about, I was like, I don't want to live by the coast as much as I wanted to all my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how can we all keep ourselves safe here? Um, but no, to, to a more serious note, okay, so who and uh, what is impacting climate change? And, you know, most specifically, it is, of course, the younger generation. We've seen Greta Thunberg. I, you know, I've got to say Greta Thunberg, you know, however you want to say it. <laughs> Thunberg. <laughs> okay. She's going to say it correctly. She's going to use a little accent there. Like, I'm trying to accommodate here just in case you're like, who is this? Anyways, um, I feel like, you know, it's because of her and the younger generation that are speaking up that it is the older generation that are starting to listen and to want to do something about it. Um, and so, of course, they're the ones who are being impacted by it uh, as a result of what previous generations have done to create these wealthy developed nations and therefore the developing nations are the ones that are suffering um you know africa is one of those for instance where there's not enough vaccines that you know that that's been intensifying the situation there if we're going to go into one example and of course weather extremes that have been very prolific there and they've got 54 countries on that continent but they only they only result in four percent of the issues of climate change, right? So that that's very small in comparison to the developed nations. Um, now, wealthier continents, uh, countries, sorry, are supposed to be helping these poorer nations. And that's one of the things that I should mention that happened at COP26, which was such a disappointment for these poorer nations who already are suffering through extreme weather conditions and, you know, through the, because of the pandemic as well, is that instead of granting them money, these countries have not, you know, they didn't, first of all, there, there was the $100 billion fund that they were supposed to meet by 2020. They reached $80 billion and they were like, okay, sorry, no, we, you know, spent so much money on the pandemic and like, we got to cater to our own goals, right? Like right. self-policing and everything. Now, now it's a matter of like, okay, we'll loan you money and these poor nations, how are they going to be able to pay that back? That's hard. Um, so instead, they've actually... They've actually supported the Santiago Network that was created in 2019 by the UN, and that is to provide guidance and uh, guidance for these developing countries on what sort of loss and damages they've experienced. Which a lot of these poorer countries are like, well, we don't want to have these consultants flying around and like telling us what our loss and damages are. Like, we need money to be able to work on the grounds to be able to better alleviate like the poverty, the starvation that is happening as well. So, you know, that that's exactly, that's my two cents there when it comes to uh, extreme weather conditions. But what, what are your thoughts like in terms of climate change? How do you think we can best tackle the situation as well or the governments here? Right. I think it kind of goes back to a lot of the basics. When you're first learning about climate change, there's so much to learn about. I'm learning. We're all learning. We all want to, you know, make that difference. I think the more you can educate yourself and the more you can understand uh, the situation, the better things can be, right? In turn, you know, we're, we're talking about such a large issue that not really one person, one, one person can always make a difference, but you need all these people together, which 
you know, is good news hearing that people are at COP26 trying to make that difference. But I think really where the concern falls is kind of what you're, what you're talking about, um, these poorer countries uh, that are underdeveloped that don't have access to sort of resources that we do have here. And those are the people who are actually leading into this subject itself are going to suffer the most mm -hmm. um, from the effects of climate change. Not to put a damper, but just to really bring it to the sort of reality of the situation here, climate change can affect social and environmental detriments of health as well. And I think that's something we should touch on, including clean air, safe drinking water, and sufficient and secure shelter. Um, and between 2030 and 2050, this is an estimate that climate change is expected to cause 250,000 additional deaths from malnutrition, from malaria, from heat stress, according to the WHO. So there's a lot of different factors at play here. And it comes directly brought up Africa as well to countries such as or places such as Africa uh, that are underdeveloped and do need help and resources when it comes to climate change. Mm -hmm. And I think it really starts with these developed nations like the United States really helping out. And something I want to talk about, which I brought up with you earlier, is this sort of idea of carbon credits. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know that it, it sounds like a complex topic, but it, apparently, um, you know, places like the United States, if they get their emissions down, can give carbon credits. Tell me if I'm wrong to underdeveloped places uh, to help them balance out that emissions. Again, working toward that 1.5 right. degrees Celsius. Also, it's one of those things in which it's so unfair. This is so unfair because obviously the de developed nations have had their time. Right. And so they're working towards reducing fossil fuels, whereas these developed nations can't get to that point, essentially, because they're still developing. So they need, still need these resources in order to grow as a country. I'm trying to now, as we were talking, I was thinking about this, like, reel it back as to, like, why does this really and truly matter? We always talk about, like, developed nations versus underdeveloped, helping each other out. But h how does that impact also the individual? Aside from the fact that we've been talking about health issues, right, but also, like, and the weather conditions, so I, our safety net in terms of housing. But think about as well, when you travel to somewhere, you want to really be able to explore the environment. You're not going to be able to have that chance if it's going to be eradicated because of the lifestyle that we lead and ultimately because of these world leaders and companies that for the past years decades have not tr have been blind to the issue or not done anything about it until now starting to which is maybe a little bit too late but you know what I, I do have faith in humanity I don't know what do you I feel like you're positive yes about I'm, I'm trying to keep the co positive spin here because there's just so much to understand and not even to spin it but to just understand that you know all the leading uh, people in the world obviously they're saying this is a dire issue we got to act quickly you know we've heard that so many times but this is something that we can help work toward a solution. I think that's exactly what we're kind of seeing from COP26. I know we talked about this earlier too, like we didn't hear much about COP25. So maybe this is this whole like buildup, especially with the younger generation um, on focusing on these issues is really going to help, you know, and push toward the kind of solutions because it's really going to be our children that are going to be growing up in the world. You know, we say 2100. I'm like, oh, wow, it seems so far away. But, you know, realistically, it could be where like your grandkids are growing up. Yeah. yeah. You know, what? I'm curious, Lauren, can you tell me a little bit as to what the situation here here is in America, like what the viewpoints are in terms of the poli political spectrum when it comes to climate change. Yeah. Are they listening to the young voters or the younger generation here? I know you would think, you know, if you go back many years ago, it's like big divide, you know, classic as ever with politics as it comes to it um, between Republicans and Democrats on climate change. But now you've actually started to see sort of a shift here. And I think that does have a lot to do with young people, uh, especially we brought up Gen Z in the beginning. 76% of Gen Z say that climate change is their number one societal issue. Like, 76 percent. That is a lot. And now I think, uh, according to new polls, it shows majority of U.S. adults, keyword adults, uh, want the government to play a larger role in addressing climate change because there there is so many polls. There is so many so much information. And a lot of the people that are really concerned about climate actually starts with children now, with kids in like elementary school. They're worried about growing up in a world where the climate's not going to be OK, where the air is quality is going to be poor. But I think that shift from the generations below them is starting to push climate change into becoming more of a bipartisan issue, as it should be. Um, and I think that has a lot to do uh, with 
sometimes young Republicans as well starting to care about conserving the environment and helping with efforts of climate change. I know you, you're here. You're a U.S. <laughs> citizen. Um, it, no, it, I'm not, by the way. You're not? I thought no, you were. No. I just, I got a work visa there. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it's all coming out. It's all coming out on air here. But, uh, <laughs> back check. Um, Don't worry. <laughs> I'm no, legal here. <laughs> but you, I'm sure, can observe, you know, sort of the difference here. And I know uh, in the U.K. as well, climate change is such a big issue. Yeah, what do you think 1, is contributing to... Uh, the sort of push to pay attention to climate issues. Right. I mean, it's something that you just mentioned there that really stuck out to me. I was like, oh, my God. As a kid, I didn't really think about global warming. It wasn't – you You would hear about it. I, I went to a German school, right, and it was very much about, like, recycling. So I learned very much about recycling. Coming here to L.A., I was like, mm, there's not really a lot of recycling here. So I just picked up on those little things. But I didn't really think about it as a kid. And the fact that you mentioned there that kids are worried, like, young kids are actually worried about it, that's a big problem. Like, young kids even picking up on this. Um, so, yeah, we really, as adults – have to come together and do something about it for our kids. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's interesting how you've mentioned there that younger Republicans are becoming more engaged with it. It's becoming more of a bipartisan issue rather than a partisan issue, which again, it's so, I can't even fathom that notion because this is a global issue. It's it's just for everybody. It shouldn't be, oh, one side is more dedicated than the other. Right. And so like in the UK and Europe, you have green parties that are huge actually, and they've never won, let's say the majority, but a lot of the, you know, bigger parties do recognize what a big issue it is. And they'll try to, you know, gain the young people's votes. And they know how to do that. And that is by actually having sort of some, some implementation of action that they're going to take in order to tackle climate change. So, and, and you hear a lot about these green parties. I mean, they're becoming bigger right now, especially amongst the younger generation. So yeah, I think it's positive. That's a positive one right there. To hear that it's becoming a bipartisan issue here in this country. Um, I, I do like hearing that and I, I don't mind living here now to hear that, you know? <laughs> She's like, I'm happy. I think I'll stay. I like it here a little bit. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I, and again, I think you bring up the green party, which I know you know, our shout out to Brian, our producer, Brian, told me that there is a Green Party here. But I'm like, oh, really? But it's not exactly the sort of Green Party that you're thinking here. But uh, you're thinking of. But I'm curious, no. you know, if we'll see over the next generation, we're talking about Gen Z, the young people, the next generation, care a lot about climate change. If we're going to see something, some sort of party emerge out of that, really focused on this sort of traditional idea, I guess, in the UK of, of a Green Party in the climate uh, and sort of policies that will help create a better future and a better globe. I hope all. so. I mean, I'd, or I just wonder if both of them are just going to adopt it, you know, as, as an issue. Right? That's true. Yeah. Like, they're like, you know what? What's going to get us votes here? <laughs> we care about the climate. We're going to push toward that. That's a great point. Right? Valid point. I wouldn't be surprised. And Joe Biden did campaign a lot on uh, climate well, I feel policies. like the infrastructure that just got the infrastructure bill that just got signed. They originally did have climate policies included in that, and, and they were, you know, Ooh. axe got, got the axe. But right. they, but they are actually working. Alex Keen Dog, known here at Erupt, will correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure they're working on another bill, uh -huh. uh, more focused yes. on climate policies specifically. You know, they'll probably try to get that through. We'll see what happens. But hey, we know a lot. I'm, has been going on at COP26, and we want to just recap it for right. all of you. We don't want you falling asleep like Joe Biden I'm at sorry. COP26. Can I don't know if we have that. Can we just play that clip, please? We're going to, like, sing you a little lullaby. Call it out. Call it out. Hold on. I don't know to, if you guys saw we this. To see Biden we really like hope you. you made it to this point because we don't want any nap time here. Play that baby lullaby. Come on, man. <laughs> Get it going. <laughs> All right. Is it there? Let's see. You gotta wake him up. Oh, there he is. <laughs> the one and only. Oh, Jeff. Oh, cutie pie. What a guy. He's, he's not God sleeping. Bless him. He's just resting his eyes. He's just resting his eyes. No, just, his eyes have meditating. to be open so many hours of the day. He's, no, he's like, <laughs> he loves the climate though. But but he's it's meditating true. Meditating upon Earth, Mother Gaia. <laughs> Let's save the world. <laughs> Do you think it's like staffers getting ready to nudge him? Like, sir, Jesus. sir, <laughs> the climate. Do you think anybody would dare to? <laughs> Guys, code red for humanity. Oh, that's His brilliant. team is looking out for they him. Are, they are, we, they are, they must. We know with the energy we hopefully brought you today, you're not feeling that way right about right. now. But yeah. we do want to recap. Our gal Yaz is going to give All us right. a short little recap. So if you could walk away with anything and share anything about uh, today, it may be these points. Well, what are leaders pushing for? That is reduce methane emissions, 
It is end deforestation, phase out coal or phase down coal for some, and reach net zero. So we can get to that 1.5 Celsius, right? Finally, what do you think, Lauren? What What's your bit? What's your bit? What What's your little bit that you're going to do to like help individually? I'm actually going to continue to educate myself and read because this show is has caused me to read a lot more, to prep a lot more, to bug Ellie about sending me <laughs> research. <laughs> but I think it's it's so interesting because I realize you know how how long this can affect us and how it can affect us all. And you know it, it makes me look at other places as well, um, aside from the United States, that I I think we all should be learning about uh, in this situation. So I'm going to take education and then maybe take some real steps. I told you I want to plant a tree. You know, I think I should plant trees. Planting trees would be fun. I know you did it in grade school. My school wasn't that cool, yeah. but we may be doing some German of that. Schools some are very planting. What about it. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, she's she's like... our earth gal, though. <laughs> All right, let's save she's this little plant. She's tending to the plant. <laughs> first things kind of first. Just it over the there. No, plant. I love that. I love that. Okay, you know what? Erupt as a team. We should just plant that tree yeah, right. together. Let's, let's all see go how out it in grows. Hollywood <laughs> on the Walk of Fame with the stars and recycle better. You know, one of the things that I did learn. You know, look at your bathroom. How many plastic things are you using as well and see what you can reuse like your bags and whatnot so really just making conscious decisions we can all individually also help save earth however let's leave it to the big boys too to really come up with some big stuff here and corporations as well to um do their bit help saving the environment well this yeah. has been a great one and an informational one we hope here on our first edition of we've got issues thank you so much for joining us Yes, please do hit that subscribe, comment below, let us know your thoughts on this conversation and a like, give us a thumbs up. Bye.